Hey everyone, uh, it has been a while since I've made a deck profile with actual cards, but uh, yeah, set four is out, uh, I opened my boxes, uh, got pretty pretty happy with what I got, and uh, I know like the last deck profile I made was kind of like this, and I just kind of want to make an updated version after all the testing I've done and everything like that, so uh, the idea of this deck is just to get him out. Uh, we have a green leader. I prefer Lord Slug, but Piccolo Jr. is also uh, a viable option, and uh, it's just he's really good at hitting uh, for crit and knocking cards out of the field and board, and that's that's the point of it. So I'm going to start with Lord Slug as my leader. Um, so people who don't know who he, what he does is he's kind of like that Vegeta that's really good, where you take one life and you get critical. Uh, he's an Awaken, draw two, and when he does, on this side, uh, if you Awaken the same turn, you lose crit, which is bad, but uh, you can discard one card from your hand, and then your opponent has to discard one card from her their hand. So that's really powerful. It kind of does the same thing as crit without actually having to attack. Um, it's a good way to get rid of, like, 10k combos. You can't use that turn anyways. Um, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about using Lord Slug and also stuff awakens, which is really good for uh, ultimate form Son Goku. So before I finish, uh, so this card is also I, I didn't I kind of passed this card uh, aside. When I first saw him, I thought this Goku was the better one, uh, and then I kind of was like, oh wait a minute, you can he he costs four in hand, so you can swap him for two, and they cost five on the field. So that's that's really good. So that's which means you can get this guy out on turn three, which is very strong uh and so that's that's kind of what made me kind of rethink how the deck works and how the play style and choose lord slug as leader so let's just get started uh one drop is bardock you probably are you know tired of hearing about this guy he's really good uh he awakens uh he's a one drop he lets you go into your two drop with swap um really good uh this gohan is our two drop uh there's only two actually like two drops that switch swap into three drops it's this one he has barrier which is really good all the most of these have barrier which is why i run them um but also uh the other one is like what it's just like a 15k that's it it's on goku so uh, i choose this one uh, just four of those um then three or four of him uh so i might actually he's he's super good in the sense that uh he lets you lead into all these cards, right? Um, if if you have a swap of uh, four for him or him, and if you don't get him, it's it's hard to play him for super cheap. So I might think of adding uh, a couple, like two of those. Uh, what is it? It's the go. There, there's two other three drop swaps. There's the go ten that gets plus fifteen k combo to your battle cards if they're defending, and then also like the the starter deck one that uh, is blows up anything in rest mode if he if you play him. So I might add two more. He does have barrier though. He's the only one with barrier, which is really nice. I really like the barrier because it, it makes it, it really hard for your opponent to deal with him. Uh, and then we'll go to uh, ultimate forms on Goku. So not only does he come out for super cheap, he also has the ability of. Uh, he gets to blow up something on your opponent's side, and then also if that's in rest mode, you get draw a card. So I've I've actually taken use of this effect a lot, and that's just really helpful. Even if it's not in block or in rest mode, you can get like a pesky blocker out of the way. That's really useful. Um, so yeah, he's he's really good, and he once again can lead into the hope of universe seven. Next up is uh, Discover Dynasty Son Gohan. He's just uh, he's for card draw. You swap him in, he draws two cards if you play him a swap. And then he also has barrier, which I don't think he really needed, but it's it's really helpful that he does. Um, something, so I only run two of him, and the reason is that he can't swap into this guy if you have three or less life, because he's four in hand. And this is specifically something that costs five, so you can't swap into him, into him all the time. You can do it if, for whatever reason, it's it's turn four or th three or four and you're not you know you're not three or less life with how fast the meta is going that's usually the case and um do that and you can also swap from him to him uh so this is this is the go 
uh, Goku from the pack. This is the uh, the dash pack Goku. Uh, but he gets to... Uh, he's, he's the one with the really weird effect. If, if one of your five or more cards are blown up and you have no other battle cards in the field, you can play them for free. I've never actually used that effect. There's some potential for it. Um, but he's just kind of some additional... Um, he helps kind of consistency with having two of them here because we'll go back so so that's the that's the whole chain that's where you go up to and in, into this guy in case you don't know what this guy does uh he's a triple attack critical and you ex evolve for one by discarding two universe seven cards from your hand that's that's kind of costly that's kind of why i run these two also because these are universe sevens um and then also the roshis and the universe seven representative that's just kind of helps the consistency of getting those but uh, every time he attacks if your leader is green which we do run a green leader he gets to destroy something in your opponent's hand or field depending on what you choose so that's really powerful three attacks three criticals already with attacking with critical throughout most of the game with lord slug uh, that's just has like a really constant destruction and it, it's really consistent to get you know this line to go off all of them have barrier they uh, and something that's, you know, people didn't think of at first with the swap mechanic is it's not like Evolve where you lose the card that you swap into. It goes back into your hand, so it's more combo power later. Uh, that's, and that's super strong because quickly you get just a huge hand and uh, you can combo out of, you can be really aggressive or defensive with your, with your combos from there. So uh, anyways, we're kind of going to the yellow support cards. I just ran four Master Roshi because he's just, he's Universe 7 and he's in the gate, which is really nice. Uh, four Successor of Hope, because I pulled four of them. <laughs> uh, barely, but my last pack we opened, opened the fourth one of these. Um, and that's, that was on the, the video, the box opening video, but... Oh, no, I spoiled it. I'm sorry. Um, but he's... he's This card's just stupid. Um, so it looks, it looks through your deck for any Goku lineage card. It has to have swap on it, so you can't use this to find this. That's, that's something you can't do. But, um, yeah, the... You can find any of this. Uh, if you're running like the Pan, you can find Pan with it too if you, you have a Goku's Lineage leader, but this card is busted. This pretty much says you have a copy of any of this, which is good because all this is really specific about where you, you know, go up the line. So, uh, like even just turn one, you can, if you, you will almost guarantee you have a turn one play because you have these two, um, and also Cornell will go into that, but yeah. Uh, Universe 7 representative just for consistency. Uh, it's also our only search for Son Goku, Hope of Universe 7. Uh, I've thought about adding more or less, but I think I'm okay with two right now. If you don't find this enough, you can put more of these in, but uh, it's just, it's okay. Uh, and you can also get to discard these from this because it's a Universe 7 card. Um, and then also, so and then the just generic support cards um, for Pranoa because I couldn't think of anything better to put in right now. Um, this is kind of like a, a really lazy uh, tech choice, like, oh, we're running Cronoa, you, you must be very tech savvy, but uh, it's, at the end of the day, it's a one card, one mana card draw, and that's fine in this deck, especially since you need to, uh, cycle is kind of important in this deck, and you really need to find the combo pieces. Um, so you have, sure, you have some tuners, but uh, just a little bit extra card draw doesn't hurt. Uh, Maya's Killie Zone, this card's really good. Um, this deck is really susceptible to like bloodlust or like a crusher ball really hurts because even though all these have barrier none of them have deflect so you can just play this card out and then your opponent can go crusher ball and you're like oh well i scoop i guess <laughs> so that's something uh, really important uh, i would consider holding these back the fact that it only does three is also really handy because it doesn't just decimate your drop area because uh, because all the cards that you're swapping go to your hand, you actually don't fill your drop up very quick in this deck. I'd say that's one of the weaknesses, uh, which is also why I don't run any overrun cards at the moment. Uh, this is technically an overrun card, but I don't run any traditional overrun cards. Uh, and then like the second reason that we're running uh, a green Demekian is sacrifice. Uh, I know, I'm aware that um, there's like instant transmission, which is the same thing for yellow. But since this card also needs a green leader, I decided. Uh, that's that's why I decided to have a green leader, but uh, this is just really useful in the fact you can be tapped out, which you usually are in this deck, and then you can still um, you can still gain attack out of nowhere, 
Uh, you take a life, so it helps you self-awaken sometimes. And it's, that's just, it helps it. Because um, we only have, the only other self-awakening is Bardock, though we will play it like every turn. And I guess the leader. Uh, and then lastly is the super combo. Uh, this is the Namekian specific super combo. We could run Trunks also, but I don't, there, he doesn't have any extra synergy. He's a Saiyan, but we're not running like Planet Vegeta. If you're running Planet Vegeta, I would consider running Trunks instead, just because um, there's not really anything else. He does get the, the five life, but the difference between five life and four life isn't a, a, as huge as it has been in the past for this game. Uh, and then, yeah, and so Lord Slug is the leader. I've also thought about Piccolo Jr. Uh, so the the date debate uh, the debate between these two guys is this guy gets you awakened really quickly and has lots of card draw and he's also I, I need to get the the small print version or I need to find the uh, the big print of Lord Slug because he's Lord Slug right he gets super big I I hope I can find people at my casuals with it but uh, our locals casual local whatever anyways um, but yeah so he has the benefit of untapping too. And he does get card draw just by attacking, which normally happens anyways. Uh, the downfall is it's not critical. So there's not as much pressure when you run Piccolo Jr., but you get more consistency, right? Because you can just play... If you have this out on turn 3 uh, by swapping you, and you don't have any energy, you just awaken and then you, you get 2 more extra energy. And so if, if you're running Piccolo Jr., I would... Con and if you have Victory, slike, uh, victory Strike... Uh, I'd say that, but for right now, I don't run Victory Strike for two reasons. One, there are two reasons. One, I don't own it. And then two, uh, the more important reason is um, I usually don't have the extra energy or even cards in my hand to put it off or to pull it off when I have this out on the board. So it's it'd be a, a really niche pick for, for Slug. But with Piccolo Jr., since you get more energy, uh, I, I'd say that he, he has some potential in that. So... That's it. This is my build. Uh, it's been it's been really good. It's a tad expensive because Successor Hope is expensive. These are all right. Bardock's like the most expensive card in the set. That's on SPR. Uh, and then I don't actually know what the dash packs are. I just I got super lucky opening four of these in dash packs. But uh, other than that, it's, it's super fun. And I want you guys to yeah let me know what you guys think. Like the video if you like it. Dislike the video if you dislike it. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not. Don't unsubscribe if you are, and that's about it. Let me know what you guys think on the comments below.